Welcome to a new episode, Deep Dive, today with Willem Middelkoop, my dear friend, and finally in person. Finally, hey. after all those years, <laughs> and bad connections. Exactly, exactly. And we had a uh. great dinner talk yesterday. It was marvelous. Actually, we should have recorded it, because it was Everything was in it and it was mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't sleep yeah. actually. <laughs> it kept me awake. Oh, but um, slept like a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know, even know where to start, but um, big, big, let's begin by looking at a, at a big picture. Um, in, in your book eight years ago, um, you saw a chance for the, the East and the West together um, to work on a new monetary system. So I think this hope is gone by now. Uh, that that's the, well. That's an important question. Um, that's um, why I'm asking it. <laughs> yeah, because if I talk reset, if I talk about the monetary reset, which I titled the big reset, yeah. but actually it's it's about a monetary reset. The last one we had was in Bretton Woods. That was 1944, and it shows that if you want to change the system, the monetary system, the international financial system, you can change that by inviting all countries to sit around the table and to discuss how you would like to change the system because the international financial system is not it's it's not given by nature or by yeah. god it's man made it's a plumbing system you know um, so in 1944 the us proposed to 44 countries present in bretton woods to use the dollar as the anchor to use dollar as the new gold and we now or insiders, experts know that the current system with the dollar as anchor is reaching its final phase, or that's what I wrote in 2014. So we need to think about going to the next phase of the international monetary system. And then it's always the question, um, um, who will be the successor for the dollar? Will it be the euro? Will it be the renminbi? So you need to talk about that. And it's very hard to talk about this plan B when you're still in plan A, because if you start to talk about the monetary plan B, people will, uh, well, markets can get scary. Um, so I always said that China should talk with the West, China should discuss this with the US together with Europe. Yeah. The, the, those are the main trading blocks in the world. And when they are convinced they want to work together, you can move to a next phase in the international monetary system uh, in, in, a, in, in, in the most positive way. But when you have a confrontation between China and the US, like we, we have now, yeah. it, it's not a shooting war, but it's, it's starting to look like a cold war, then there's small chance that you'll have a positive outcome. And, and that that could be that could be scary, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned the Cold War. You think it could be a hot war as well? Well, it's quite clear that China wants to wants China to become part again of well of communist China. Mm -hmm. And to understand that a little bit better, you need to go back to history. Um, uh, right after the Second World War. There was a hyperinflation in China between yeah. 1946 and 49. So there was a lot of chaos, and during that chaos, uh, Mao and his friends took took over. That that was the communist revolution. And then Chiang Kai-shek, who was the ruler at that time, he fled to Taiwan. He took the gold actually with him oh, okay. and fled to Taiwan. So mm -hmm. that explains why China wants yeah. to have. Taiwan, Taiwan back, back again <laughs> and their gold. <laughs> <laughs> the gold, so, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and so that's a very long history. And, and be, because uh, Hong Kong, of course, used to be part of China, if we go yeah. <laughs> back in history. And, and for the Chinese, Taiwan is part of their empire as well. So And they took over Hong Kong <laughs> so easily, one could say, without shooting. So they hope to do the same with Taiwan. But of course, Taiwan... Is, is much more important and um, it's a big question what the US would do when China would really take steps to to corner <laughs> Taiwan yeah. and it that could end in a shooting war but I, I read a few um, analysis by military experts uh, because they played some war games uh, on this topic and, and most experts agree that the US can't win this war <laughs> no no. So you're bullish on China in the next couple of years or are you bearish? Um, I, I, I like to look at long trends. Yeah. So 
I'm a student of history, a monetary history, and if you go back, the center of economic activity was always in Asia, <laughs> always. And it, it started to move to the West only after 1700, 1800. You know, so it's only actually the last 200 years that the center of activity, of world economic activity, was in the West. So it moved from the East to the West, and now it's moving back again to the East. So the center of eco economic um, activity is now somewhere in Europe. If you look on the map, it's moving back to Asia. So Asia is on the rise, and the West is, 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 is going down. So if you, if you look at like life cycles, then the West is very mature, and it's aging, and, and the East is rising. And these are very strong and long trends. Yeah. Um, so it can ex you can expect China and the rest of Asia to become more important compared to the West. Mm -hmm. So you run a, a mutual fund, a mining fund actually, really interesting. Um, we talked about a commodity um, super cycle yesterday at the dinner. Um, so you invest in China as well? You invest in, in Chinese mining companies or are you not scared that the <laughs> communist we, we party... We sell to Chinese companies. Okay, okay. So we invest in small companies. Yeah. We try to um, select the best 100 small companies in mining being responsible for the best and most significant m m metal discoveries yeah. so in gold silver copper nickel zinc so we enter in a very early stage and then our exit strategy is to sell our shares when the company is bought out by okay. uh, by a company looking for more reserves And the trend in the last 10 years is that more and more Chinese companies are buying up these oh, yeah. smaller okay. companies who made the discovery. Yeah. So that's why we love to okay. sell to the Chinese. Okay. Understood. So let's switch gears to another hot topic, CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies. Uh, most people still don't know what this is all about. So help us out here. What's so special about the CBDCs? Uh, actually, there's nothing too special yeah. because it's just a digital form of the current money. So it, it's, no, it's not crypto. So it's it, fiat scam. <laughs> well, one could say, yeah. <laughs> so I don't think it's competition for Bitcoin. The more CBDC will be created by central banks, the more people will flee towards Bitcoin mm. because Bitcoin is restricted at 21 million units, which can be mined. We're already at 20 million. So it, it's becoming a scarce uh, product, uh, a unit of Bitcoin. But central bank digital currencies is just, like I said, it's a, it's a new digital layer on the fiat money system. But the only one thing um, important to understand is program, uh, this is money which can be programmed to do something. So th they might tell you, you can download a ECB wallet. <laughs> Thank you, our friends yeah, <laughs> next door, Christine. <laughs> yeah, you can download ECB wallet. We put some digital euro there, but that's programmed in a way that you can use it for food, but you can't use it to buy Bitcoin. Okay, so restricted, restricted, restricted money. Yeah, restricted okay. money. And, and, and they also could say this, this money needs to be spent before the end of the year. Because otherwise, it's, it's yeah. gone. Yeah. So you can program it in any way. So that makes the possibility of financial repression much larger. I expect much more financial repression. So that, that But even perhaps for climate change, they could say, hey, you're just allowed to eat once a month meat because yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. of carbon. Or you can't, f yeah. you can't use this to buy airline tickets. Exactly, because yeah. you already bought one last quarter. So hey, it's over. Yeah. Well, But this is scary. It sounds like an Orwellian nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've seen uh, evidence of a first test program in which MasterCard is working together with other major companies to um, to really calculate what your CO2 footprint is with all the, uh, the purchases. Are you, you kidding do. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could all well be connected. Uh, the, the new wallet you have shows your digital money and sh shows your CO2 status. Yeah. And there are even, uh, Google it, uh, there are even some first reports that we could have climate lockdowns. So they'll yeah. tell you we, we need to stop flying or restrict flying because of the climate. So things are getting a little spooky here. Yeah, it's like 1984. So Orwell was oh, yeah, totally yeah, yeah. right. Oh my gosh. But so you know, Orwell, he was married. Not, not many people know this. So where did, did George Orwell get his information? I don't know. He and was he married he, to whom? <laughs> he was married to a f official who was uh, working at the um, British Ministry of Information during the Second World War and, bef and years before that. 
Okay. So he he heard actually the I ideas from her. That that's what what many people experts think. Belo- believe that she came home with all, and hearing and all this. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, that's that's very interesting, <laughs> Willem. So, but do you think is 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 Bitcoin a tool to fight those um, Orwellian nightmare, these digital currencies? Because this sounds like if they implant it, it sounds like yeah, horrible. Yeah, um, you know, money is is a strange thing. Many things can become money. When people think something is valuable and start trading it, yeah. it, it actually becomes money. And if you look at all the money systems we've had in the past, and you look at Bitcoin, then actually, if you really study it from a technical monetary point of view, you should conclude that money is the uh, Bitcoin is the best possible form of money. You know. It's it's scarce. It's highly uh, you can divide it in very small parts. Uh, it's easy to transfer, and I think that explains the success of Bitcoin. More and more people start to understand. Well, this is easy yeah. money, and this is hard money, like hard geld, wie man das sagt in Deutsch. Um, and the more central bank digital currencies will be created, the more people understand. Well, this this is this is fiat. This is still. Um, this money we can't trust. This is not hard to get. Eh? This uh, it's soft money, and, and more and more people will, will, I think, switch over to 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 Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, the first idea was to use it as a medium of exchange. Yeah. So to pay your coffee. Yeah. But there are three functions for money. One is medium of exchange. One, uh, the other is store of value, and then you have unit of account. So you can do bookkeeping with it. But the medium of exchange part of, of Bitcoin failed until now, or not failed, but wasn't very successful. Maybe the lightning layer will change that, but that's yeah. a bit technical. But if you look at the store of value function, that then Bitcoin behaved it's wonderful. It's superior, superior. Yeah. It's superior. A- and it, that's why it gained on average 9% a month. So that's your return since the start eh, with all the oh my crashes. Gosh, yeah, yeah. And I think people like uh, Bitcoin as a store of value. That's how I use it. You know, I bought my Bitcoin, put it in cold storage offline. Nobody can hack it, and uh, um, that works it. very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. It definitely yeah. does. So, you have any thoughts on on the current uh, Bitcoin uh, cycle? What do you think? Where where do we stay? How long will it last? And when will the bear market? appear yeah um, bitcoin has been around for 12 years now yeah. uh, almost 13 years and the great thing is we know the cycle patterns for your cycles now. yeah made a lot of videos about it yeah um and and you have some models like the model of my dutch friend uh, plan b who is uh, he was on the show as well we talked about oh, him yesterday oh, great. yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to watch this video it's right here it's it's, it's mind-blowing as well yeah. so so with his model and some other technical indicators you can really call tops and bottoms. And if you look at the model now, and we're recording this in the middle of November, uh, most experts expect a top somewhere in the next 12 months. But what we see, the tops are getting a little lower in every cycle and take a little longer. So, so you could have a top within four months, but I think it will take a little longer. Okay. And um, it's always a question, how far will you overshoot? So man, many yeah. people think the top will be around 100,000. Mm. But I spoke to Plan B uh, last week about this. And um, um, we both agree that you could well have an overshoot towards 200,000, 300,000. Yeah, 500. Or, or even more yeah. Yeah. before this cycle ends. Yeah, It was the same 2017. We overshot to nearly 20,000 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the fair value was around 9 or 10. You know, and um, yeah. if, if the market gets excited, if FOMO kicks in, yeah. and if, if if the if the retailer comes in, it's getting crazy. And I think it will be a crazy altcoin market as well. Then yeah, and I think more and more really um, wealthy, 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 very high, well, very rich people like Michael Saylor, the yeah. billionaires step in, and and they have so much purchasing power because they have so much fiat. <laughs> And and now it's getting scarcer and scarcer, you know, to mine the new Bitcoin. And more and more people are, are huddling, you know, they, they're storing it in, in, in cold storage and putting it away. So you could, could really get a, a, a fight for the last available Bitcoin. And then f- strange things can happen. I think that will happen in the next cycle. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it earlier, especially now we have so much 
inflation kicking in. Uh, I yeah. call it superinflation. It's not hyperinflation, but it's superinflation. And more and more people will start to understand that Bitcoin, like gold uh, and silver, can really help you to 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 survive and to protect a, your purchasing power. Yeah, that, that's it. That's, that's it. That's yeah. Let's. We talked about digital gold. Let's talk about gold and silver and precious metals. You're great expert about this um, um, sector. Um, like I mentioned already, you have a, a mining fund, really successful. So, um, yeah. It's open for German investors as well. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I heard that yesterday. <laughs> we talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we see the perfect setting actually for rising precious metal prices. Yeah. yeah, we have inflation, we have a crisis, people lose trust in the financial system, the central banks print money like never before, politicians are incompetent, a lockdown is coming in, in, in the Netherlands everywhere. So why is gold and silver not exploding? Um, the, the undertitle of, of my book, The Big Reset, which was translated into German as yeah, the, the Große Neustart. Yeah. yeah, The Große Neustart. I will put yeah. the link of this really great book um, beneath the, uh, the video, of course. Yes. Yeah, and people can download it for free yeah, on our well. website. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, the English link, edition. Yeah. That's yeah. the English edition. So, um, well, gold and silver. Um, oh, the undertitle of the book was The War on Gold and the Financial Endgame. So yeah. if, if we talk about the war on gold, what's the war on gold? Well, it's, it's quite clear that since 1971, when the U.S. Um, well, actually defaulted, because in Bretton Woods in 1944, the U.S. said the dollar will be as good as gold, it's connected to gold, and countries can always exchange surplus dollars for, for gold. In 1971, you know, the... the They defaulted. Yeah. Uh, they didn't keep that promise. So since then, the dollar is not as good as gold anymore. And, and, and actually, gold became the dollar's enemy after that decision in August 1971. So there's a very strong motive by the U.S. and the Federal Reserve to talk the, the dollar up, that's the strong dollar policy, and to talk gold down. Yeah. But they don't, they not only talk gold down, they also trade it down. Because we have had the Department of Justice in the US calling the JP Morgan's metal desk a criminal enterprise yeah. because they've been active on the on, on in trading gold and silver futures by bringing the price down manipulating him mm, yeah. yeah and and, and that's the main reason why uh, if you look at at the price gains in in commodities in the last 12 months everything is up 30 50 70 percent only silver is up four percent so they they are able to keep this price controlled at a low price that explains also why silver is the only metal trading at 50 percent of the 1980 price. So I think silver, I, I bought so much physical silver myself, uh, much more than, than gold, so because silver is yeah. is so cheap. And it's a metal which is used in iPhones as well. It's l l used a lot in electronics. Yeah. And there has been a, a production deficit for 50 years now. So the total production is less than the total. You had some numbers demand. yesterday during the dinner. You said that that's the production per year. Like, I think, did you say it or was it Ronnie? 800,000? Um, 800 million? 800 world, million world, world ounces. World production is yeah. 800 million ounces. But and we need, but we need much more like one point. D demand is over 1 million. Oh my gosh, yeah. A and And the, the, the deficit, the difference yeah. is, is um, um, we still have all the old uh, coins from the 1960s, 70s yeah, sure. and 80s. And they were all melted into um, well the, the large bars. So we still use what some of these old uh, silver, um, well, which uh, coins yeah. uh, to, 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 to bridge the gap. Yeah, But yeah, one yeah. day that will be gone and yeah. then, then we'll have a problem. Okay, so what's your price target for gold and silver next year, 2022 and for this decade? I think we've seen uh, an end uh, of the correction, which started in August uh, yeah. 2020 now. Uh, so it looks very positive. Uh, so I expect a very fast run of gold towards the old highs, just over 2000. And then you'll have a test and then 2000 will become the floor. The, uh, I think there will become support for the gold price. And then I expect later next year a move, uh, fast move towards 2500. Mm -hmm. Uh, followed by move towards 3,000 maybe the year after. And silver will follow. Silver is poor man's gold. 
it always reacts a little bit more uh, <laughs> extreme than gold on the on the upside and the downside. Silver should return to the old high, like fifty dollars. Yeah. That was the high in 1980. It was the high in 2011. I expect a fast run towards fifty dollars, but I don't think we'll reach it next year. But, but we, we should reach forty dollars next yeah, year, uh, thirty-five. Yeah. Uh, yesterday you said something very interesting. We talked about the commodity super cycle, and we both agreed. We all agreed on the table that we are already in it. But you said actually it could go until two thousand fifty-two, yeah. and that's a crazy number. So you will be yeah. uh, seventy then. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 even no, no, no. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm sixty-nine. I will be ninety then. Um, so that's that. That would be a great uh, end of my life to have the commodity super cycle running till 2050. Yeah. Actually, I quote Avi Gilbert. Uh, he's a very okay. famous technical analyst, uh, anal analyst, a trader, and he started uh, Elliott uh, Wave Trader. And he made a um, large, um, well, uh, report, res piece of research on, on his expectations yeah. for the for gold and commodities. And actually, he predicted he was the guy. I, I discovered him because I was looking for somebody who said in 2011 that that would be the top for gold. Yeah. And actually, he, he published a report uh, calling for a top in gold around 1900 in 2011. So then I thought, well, this guy, his system ha he worked in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I found out he called for a, a bottom for gold and commodities uh, early 2016. And he turned out to be right again. He expected the bottom to happen in April. It, it was a, yeah. in January 2016. And then when I studied his long-term model, um, it turned out that he, he, he called the low in 2016 a generational low for commodities. Wow. Generational okay. low. Generational low. Okay. Yeah, you, won't, you will never see that again yeah. in your lifetime. And then it's the start of a new uptrend. And you have the five waves. Maybe you know that from the Elliott wave yeah. count. And it's the really the long wave, and this will end um, 2052. with the top 2052. It suits actually to my prediction in my book, because I said this is a once in a life opportunity we are um, seeing right now, investing in yeah. commodities, in gold and silver. You know what his targets are for gold for uh, silver, one thousand dollar pounds. Wow. Okay. For gold, twenty five thousand. Okay. And for the HUI, the UE index, he expects 10,000 and wow. it's at 275 now. Does he have and a price tag on, on Bitcoin as well? No, that wasn't part okay. of this model. Yeah. But you can only explain this by understanding we might get much more inflation in yeah. the next decades. So $1,000 silver, silver sounds but incredible. In but, but he shows, if you look back at yeah. the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones, I think, bottomed around uh, 100 points in, in the 1940s. That was a general rational low mm -hmm. in 1942 for the Dow Jones. And then it moved up to 30,000 points in 60, 70 mm -hmm. years. So it can happen. You can sure. have this. Uh, Bitcoin has showed, <laughs> shown it as Perfect. well. Perfect. But imagine the world we would live in if silver is at 1,000 and Bitcoin is perhaps yeah. at 5 million or something. Yeah. It will be crazy. It will be crazy. We well, talked so about be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Right? And we talked yeah. about the fourth turning. I will mention it later. But let's talk about, about one precious metal actually nobody cares about right now. It's platinum. And it's very difficult to find good deposits in this area. Yeah. So um, I bought some physical myself. Okay. Platinum. It's okay. Because it's so cheap now. If yeah, you look at the historical I ratio so with gold. Yeah. yeah. I'm super bullish on silver, but also on platinum. Um, it's it's uh, difficult to get s to find good mines outside of um, South Africa or Russia. So um, there's a big discovery now in Australia by oh. Chalice Mines. Chalice Mines, but okay. but they're all already valued at two billion. Wow. So uh, <laughs> is that worth? Uh, well, I think might be sold for four billion, but <laughs> um, but it, it's 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 quite highly valued already. Um, so actually, they one. They were one of the. They were on our shortlist for the Discovery Award last year, which oh. was won by Greatland Gold, okay. and Chalice was one of the four nice. companies. So every year we select the companies working on the most significant discoveries, mm. and then we reward one with the, the Discovery okay. Award. Okay. So, but I think South Africa and Russia, they both know they have the monopoly on, on, on platinum. Yeah. So, what do you think? They will create a, a price cartel or something? Is it possible? What do you think? 
Uh, well, everything is possible. In, in Palladium, we have seen a short squeeze already a few years ago, uh, just like gold and silver. Yep. Uh, if you look at the open interest on, on the future markets, um, there's a huge open interest in four metals, and that's gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Well, in palladium, we used to have a huge open interest, and so the price was controlled by yeah. futures as well. And then we got the short squeeze in palladium because palladium was needed for the hybrid cars. Yeah. You need palladium for the exhaust systems. Hybrid cars don't get that hot, the exhaust systems. So then platinum is not working, you need palladium. And that uh, delivered a short squeeze because the traders, the paper traders, had to deliver the physical metal. And then uh, during that short squeeze, um, the palladium price went up 4x. Yeah. And the paper traders were pushed out of the market. So if uh, we did some studies on, on the, the open interest. And you saw the open interest declining during the short squeeze. So that's a proof for me that they used the paper trading, the future to trading, manipulate. to uh, manage the palladium. Yeah. But the, now the uh, open interest in, in platinum is still very high and silver is very high. So I think we'll get short squeezes like the one with palladium in the near future, in the not too distant future, well, let's say in the next decade. So expect the prices of all these metals to go up 3x, 4x, 5x mm. in a very short time frame. Uh, and to leverage this, it's even better to invest in mines. Do you have some yeah, favorite sure. plat platinum, palladium mines? It's, it's 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 very hard like you uh, yeah. like you said um, there's also strange um, these are small markets in Australia there's not one smelter who can melt this uh, yeah. this this material um, from the from the rocks so it needs to be shipped to uh, South Africa or, or, or to Asia um, PTM um, that's that's a Canadian listed uh, stock okay um, They, they are developing a large new um, um, platinum mine in South Africa. Okay. So that, that's a name that comes to mind. But it's, it's quite difficult uh, okay. to find good names. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's what you do actually with your fund. You search for good, good opportunities and yeah. you're really, really yeah. successful with it. So um, which commodities besides precious metals are currently um, on, your, on your bucket list, on your buying list? Yeah, it's co especially copper and nickel. Copper and nickel, yeah. okay, that's and interesting. And why? Uh, because those metals we need to to um, produce the e batteries for the EVs. Yeah. So all people always talk about lithium and cobalt. Yeah, and yeah. These are the sexy names. Yeah. That's why you see the hype. But if you look at the volume, the volume is in copper and nickel. Okay. Actually, Tesla is working to phase out cobalt. Yeah. One hundred percent. Because cobalt, you know, there's a lot of uh, child labor involved yeah, in the Congo. Yeah, yeah. And not with copper and nickel. People always think that all the bad stories about cobalt go for the whole industry, mm. also go for copper and nickel. But copper and nickel is produced in very high-tech mines. <laughs> you won't find a child near <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in yeah. miles. Yeah. You know? yeah. This is this is this highly technical. And um, if you look at the supply and demand study, we do a lot of supply and demand studies for the metals for the next decade. And uh, then it clearly shows there will be huge deficit, production deficit for copper mm -hmm. and for nickel as well. So that's a great way to invest now in the best quality discoveries in, in, in those metals. Yeah, you want to share some with us? Um, yeah, one is one is still very cheap. We always look at which are the big, the largest still undeveloped projects, which are still not owned by the majors. Mm. And uh, one is Solgold. Solgold has a huge copper discovery in uh, Ecuador. Oh, okay. It's it's not the best country, but it's also not the worst country. Yeah, there okay. are some there yeah. are some great mines in uh, Ecuador. Ecuador. Yeah. Ask the London family. Um, so Sol Gold will be bought out and it's, it's still mm. cheap. It's so we cheap. have a large position in that. Cornerstone is connected to that story. Mm. They used to own the project. So um, I, I like those names. Okay, cool. They're still cheap. I'm, I'm bullish on tin. You have any... Yeah. any, yeah. any, any yeah. Yeah. But, tin, but tin, um, it, it's like lithium and cobalt. These are the new and the flavors of the month, one could say. They're sexy names. Everyone's looking for tin. You think so? But I think it's totally underrated. Well, uh, among our <laughs> yeah. group of I okay, on my, and, mining yeah. mining experts, yeah. there's everyone is looking for tin now. Uh, but these are very small markets. And yeah, I know, uh, very. Uh, there, I I can't remember a single 
large, largest tin discovery in the next, next, last decades. But we have another huge position in Tinka Resources, actually. We own almost 10%. Wow. And this is a zinc discovery, which has a large tin and silver component. Mm, okay. And the total market cap of Tinka is only 70 million. It's nothing. And this is in Peru. It's also not the best country. Yeah, the jurisdiction is dangerous. Yeah. Well, <laughs> communists. <but> yeah. Well, <laughs> socialists. Well, it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> but there um, are a few major uh, producers of base metals in Peru. Yeah. And both of them, two of them, took a position already in Tinka. So one owns 14%, I think. The other one owns 12%. Mm. So you have two metal producers who have operating mines and smelters in Peru taking a position. So then I think one of them will buy them for sure. And yeah. you might even get a bidding war between the two of them. So we build a position of almost 10%, the maximum we can do within our fund. Because this, this is a huge deposit, a zinc deposit with silver and tin. And it's trading at 70 million. It's nothing. So I noticed besides uranium, you don't invest into energy commodities. Um, why is that? You're, you're bearish or...? Uh, no, um, actually, I like energy a lot. The two of my books uh, handle the energy yeah. complex. One is the Tesla revolution, which is also mm -hmm. in, in, Germany. in Germany. And we, we studied in, in, in those books, we really studied the um, world of energy. Yeah. Uh, it's highly connected to the world of commodities. Of course, they are commodities, but energy is all also a very important part in mm. the production of everything. It's also commodities. And... Um, um, since we are a discovery fund, so we try to find small companies working on the large discoveries. We try to do that in oil and gas as well. But oil and gas, to find oil and gas is a totally different world. It's, it's you know, the Royal Dutch Shells of the world who do the drilling. These are very, um, um, it's, it's, it costs you millions to, to, to drill a new oil well. Uh, compared to drilling for gold and silver, which costs you a few thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand. So it's very difficult to do, to use our model in the world okay. of uh, oil and gas. And that's why we decided to concentrate on okay. the metals. Makes sense. And sometimes we do, do we do swing trades in uh, energy ETFs. So okay. that's what we use. When you see an opportunity. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah um, Let's talk about agriculture, because the prices are just exploding. It's incredible. Last time we saw that we had a revolution in, in Africa, actually. Yeah. Um, and now... Even in Syria. In the Syria, the every, everything yeah. started with uh, yeah. rising food prices. Yeah. So are you concerned about the impact and the development we see right now? A lot. Okay. It really scares me. Yeah. And actually, I don't want to trade and invest myself in in these kind of products. I don't want to help prices. Yeah, to rise. Get, get, yeah. Uh, Got it. I, yeah. I, I've, I've been uh, explaining that for years. Uh, but if you look at the price of fertilizer, yeah. it jumped tenfold. And uh, fertilizer is, is, is a major component. It's very important. Do you expect that we will see empty shelves in the supermarkets? Well, or? no, we, I expect higher prices. Higher prices, <laughs> but not empty but, shelves. Well, okay. um, the CEO of a large Norwegian company, uh, Yara, uh, who's who's mm. who's who's huge in um, as a producer of a fertilizer? He warned there would be a, a food food crisis would be would be coming and, and and but this this the food crisis the most scary part is it it it, it touches on the lower income class exactly. and 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 the poor exactly. people. Yeah. We will exactly. survive. Yeah, yeah. But I think there are large parts of the lower income classes, especially in poor countries who don't have enough uh, money now to buy basic food and energy uh, needed to survive. So that this is, this is getting scary, yeah. really getting scary. And, and, and I'm a student of monetary history. That's I said why, that before. Yeah, yeah. I studied the Weimar uh, hyperinflation. Yeah. Uh, I studied, you know, the, the when money dies, all those books. And, and w when inflation reaches a point that food and energy become too expensive, then people start to die literally because of a lack of food and Starvation, energy. Yeah. 
Uh, it happened here in Germany, yeah, I know, in the 1920s, I know. 30s. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, 1920s. Yeah. So, yeah, the history is a good advisor. Yeah. yeah. We should look back, but we, we, we all forgot about it. And that's why we talked about the fourth turning yesterday as well, yeah, the cycle of generations. In, so in the Netherlands, some people call now for subsidies for poor people so they can buy uh, more food <laughs> and energy. But if you get, give them uh, subsidies, you know, you create new money again. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, so you, it, 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 does, it, it makes the problem worse instead of making better. So I think central bankers and politicians will begin to understand that they can't solve this problem. By printing money. They no. tried it in Weimar, Zimbabwe, yeah. Argentina, everywhere. Never works. Yeah, never works. Yeah. But they will try it again and yeah. again because they yeah. think this time is different. Yeah, yeah this is crazy. Um, what, what's your take on inflation? Because all the central banks say it's transitory. We have right now above 4% in, in, in Europe. Um, you think it will go away in spring or you uh, think it will stick with us? Um, I think we've been printing so much money especially since 1971 yeah. and we have we had this long deflation uh, trend deflationary trend because of the rise of china mm -hmm. and everything and, and 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 all the tech which helped us to bring prices down so we almost forgot about the risk of inflation and i think now um we see a change of the trend in which inflation will be the dominant trend okay. mm. this this won't go away uh, we meet a lot of high net worth investors uh, in our yeah. fund and i see them all starting to move money to well everything the government can't print because yeah. they, they have the limited zero assets limited assets yeah and yeah. also yeah. the zero interest rate policy yeah. if you have a few million on your savings account and you don't get any returns on that you actually you get a you penalty have to pay. you have to pay yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's the fastest way you know to to move money out of the banking system towards everything the government can't print so that that was that was uh, that was bad that they changed but i think they will tax it then they will tax everything oh sure oh sure real estate oh, sure. yeah assets everything bitcoin but the high net worth they will start fleeing you know that i've got many people asking me will where should we go should same we here. go to dubai should same here every day every day yeah. mark where can we go what's yeah. the exit strategy all the yeah clients and ask. i i even put a tweet out warning for this and then you have the, the journalists from the mainstream media uh, laughing uh, yeah you and your friends uh, who are in switzerland and well no you guys take this serious because these guys are leaving and taking their money with them Bra and the brain brain drain yeah but that's that's um, the worst the worst yeah. so yeah so these are some major trends these are i'm always trying to spot the major new trends so and it's very difficult to spot them. Uh, so let's inflation is a great example. People say, "Ah, oh, that's just temporary," you know, that will change. So people always have a difficult understanding when a new trend arrives. That they all they only can acknowledge it when when it's years later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we see the end of, of many cycles right now and we see the start of a new cycle and um, Neil Hout um, mentioned it in his book, The Fourth Turning, that the winter is the, the cycle we are right now in. So um, how, how do you prepare yourself beside the investments for this fourth turning or what can you give an advice to our audience how to prepare for it? Well, I always um, like to advise people to be very flexible. Yeah. So don't make any important decisions now where to relocate or, yeah. um, but but be sure you're highly flexible be sure you're diversified in your assets i have a very simple model which is very easy to uh, to understand and to remember 25 percent of your assets in real estate 25 percent in equities 25 percent in physical gold and silver platinum and then 20 25 percent in cash slash bitcoin it used to be cash, but now I pr advise people and do that myself to keep Bitcoin. the cash in, in Bitcoin yeah. because it has superior returns. And if you um, if you work with d d these four classes, asset classes, we back tested this to uh, 2007 and 2000, 
it saves your purchasing power pretty well and because there are many scenarios you can envision you could have deflationary collapse you could have high inflation superinflation like we have now you could have um, um, uh, the banks can close uh, stock exchange can close you don't know what will happen uh, and if you have these um, uh, this di diversification in, in, in your net worth you'll do well in it will be fine yeah. it will be fine you'll Protect survive your it protects yeah. the purchasing power. One will rise, and, uh, another one will perhaps fail. And people who are really wealthy, it's very uh, smart for them to have a second base outside the yeah, EU. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like to be in Switzerland a lot. I was born in Switzerland, so I have a place there. I have a Swiss car. I'm not Swiss, but you have a place to What's go What's your favorite to. car, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> don't well, brown nose. Don't say a German BM, one. Yeah, BM, I knew it. <laughs> BMW. <laughs> yeah, I thought Volvo. <laughs> uh, I, I have the last 12 cylinders. So, okay. And, uh, okay. They, they still make that engine, but only for Rolls, Rolls Royce. Okay. Yeah, they're not allowed to put it into their own cars no, anymore. No, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> yeah. So, so you expect inflation That's to right. stay, is to stick with us, to stay above four percent or five percent, ten percent. You said superinflation, not yeah. hyperinflation, superinflation. Yeah, I, I don't like hyperinflation yeah. because everybody goes from deflation right to hyperinflation. Well, hyperinflation is very rare, and actually, I think in the ma in main disc in main economies. Yeah hyperinflation without a war it's it, hard it, to get yeah it's hard it's, it's never yeah, yeah. you only get it in, in china was after a, a war <laughs> yeah. um, in the weimar uh, republic the hyperinflation was after a war so i think central bankers uh, understand uh, how hyperinflation develops so they can they they can always uh, act and and avoid hyperinflation by um, revaluing gold bringing gold back to in the system you can restore trust, so they will do that when needed. Um, so I like to speak about uh, superinflation, which is 10% plus. So the official inflation is around 4, 5, 6% now. But if you use the old model, which was used in the 1980s to calculate the inflation, it shows uh, inflation in the US is now 13%. Manipulation everywhere. Oh yeah, everywhere. Oh, yeah. they changed Precious the models. Metals, inflation, <laughs> everything. They, yeah. Because it's highly beneficial for, for government. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to uh, increase uh, the wages, but uh, also the subsidies and the pensions, you have to increase, um, uh, compensate them for inflation. Yeah, yeah. And also economic growth. Economic growth. <laughs> You have to, uh, when the inflation is high, <laughs> your uh, economic growth number comes out lower. Yeah. So yeah. there are many benefits for government. Yeah, true. <coughs> yeah, so Willem, we have, we have so much in common. We're brother in minds and we also have in common the same currency, the euro. Yeah. So this will yeah, <laughs> be another <laughs> question. Will the euro survive? Um, in the short term, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, you will need a country like France um, doing a, a, a Brexit type of move. Brexit. To really, yeah, <laughs> Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> yeah, to really blow up yeah. the system. But you shouldn't forget how much political <laughs> energy was invested into the Euro project. And I, I, I visit China quite a bit. And if you listen to the Chinese, they don't want to go back to Europe with all different currencies. So mm. there's a very strong power uh, working for the euro project to survive from china and also also from china okay but from the europe as well yeah, from sure. china and also from the us because if you look at the monetary reset topic which we discussed at yeah. the start um, it works best when you have blocks you have the dollar block yeah. <coughs> in the us you have the euro block and then you have china so if you have this fragmentation nobody's Nobody is willing uh, to have that situation again. So I think there's very high chance that the euro will stay here. But that can, that can, something can happen that the the euro system, the EU system, will blow up. So we I could think have the European Union will fail. That, that I think if the euro fails, that can be because the EU will fail. Ah, okay. There will be such a yeah. revolt against Brussels when the power of brussels becomes even even stronger and stronger you have the great reset plans now so mm. we'll have large changes within the society as well and when this is supported by the eu and it's not supported by the people you can you can get well re re 
revolutionary times maybe or tensions. What's the time frame? This decade or? Well, if you look at the fourth turning, <coughs> which is... Should uh, be this decade then. Uh, yeah, then you, you could expect it later in this decade that you can have major changes coming to systems. Mm. Okay. And, and uh, even warlike, um, yeah, the wi like they call the winter period in, yeah, in the fourth yeah, turning. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's why I advise people to be highly flexible yeah. the next decade and be sure you have li liquid assets. You're diversified and you don't rely on uh, the flying. Uh, so that's, I, 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 li I, I travel to Dubai on Sunday. And Dubai could be a perfect second or third base. But the problem is you always need to fly there. Well, I can drive to Switzerland or you can drive to Portugal. Yeah, yeah. but you can't <laughs> drive to Dubai. Yeah, you, can, you can drive to Dubai, but it's yeah, a long but ride. Long way. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a nice car, you, you can you, do it. You need echo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Willem, I'm l I love talking to you. I could do it for hours. We did it yesterday for yeah, hours. Yeah. And uh, also today it felt like five minutes actually but it's already well, like one hour let's do it again so. uh, definitely yeah. we have to repeat it we have to continue with our conversation because there's so many topics and it's it's always mind-blowing picking your mind actually which is brilliant and you have to follow Willem on Twitter and I will put all the links beneath the, the video and in the description and I have a present for you actually to practice your Thank German you. yeah it's yeah my it's kind of ambitious yeah and so. after this you will be perfect it's Thank my fixed best-selling book and um, yeah yeah, it's the biggest it. chance of all times, and I think we we see oh, it right it's, now. It's in the a comment. big one, eh? Yeah, it's it's a big one. Yeah, it was a lot of you work. worked hard. I did, I did, I did, and I'm writing on the next one already. Okay, well, I, I stopped writing books because uh, I was like you. You're a little younger, I think. Um, I'm 59 now. Yeah, I'm so 26. I want, <laughs> I, I want to have the weekends off. For well, I'm still working, but when you write books, you're working always. Yeah, yeah, true story. Every, yeah, every free research. hour of the. I know. Of the, of, the, of the day and That's the week. Cool. Actually, I went on holiday with the family again this summer. And then my kid said, Daddy, this is the holiday you work the least hours. So I did, they, they still sick. saw me working. <laughs> <laughs> but that's normally, you, I was working all the holidays. Okay. And, okay. and that's, not, that's not good. No, so you need to spend time with, with other the family. Because we that's have it. time preference is very important. Yeah, time is limited as well, yeah. as well uh, as, as Bitcoin and gold. So you um, have to spend the time with your loved ones. So. Well, it was a pleasure having you again. Great, Great meeting you and hope to see you soon Thank again. You. Thank, Thank you. Care. Thank you, my Bye. friends. Thank you.